All right, welcome grade seven. Uh, some of you have been asking for uh, an explanation video for some of the exercise questions. So I'm gonna be stepping through that today. This is completely optional. So if you feel like you have understood it really well um, and you don't need the further in-depth explanation, uh, then you do not need to watch this video. But for those of you who might be stuck, who want to see a detailed walkthrough of each of these questions, uh, please stick around and hopefully this is helpful for you. So in exercise 9.1, what we were working with was completing the terms in uh, the sequence that's there. We are given the first four terms in each sequence and we're asked to come up with the next two terms. Um, number one has us dealing with adding and subtracting uh, adding and subtracting rules. And so 1a, 1a, uh, it gives us the numbers 11, 13, 15, 17, and then asks us to come up with the next two. So if we take a look at our rule here, we see that it is increasing as we go through these terms here. And so we're going from 11 to 13 to 15 to 17. We have to figure out, is it increasing by the same amount? 11 to 13 is going up by 2, 13 to 15, up by 2, 15 to 17, going up by 2. So we are adding 2 each time around. So if I continue that rule of that plus 2, then that means that 17 goes to 19 next. I add 2 to that, and I'm going to get to 21. So my next two terms in this sequence are 19 and 21. B, uh, we are given the numbers 1, 4, 7, and 10, and we're asked to figure out the next two terms. So here, let's take a look. It also is an increase, so I'm going to be adding. I want to see if I can add by the same amount. To go from 1 to 4, I'm adding 3. To go from 4 to 7, I'm also adding 3. To go from 7 to 10, I'm also adding 3. So that must be a rule. Um, I'm going to add 3 to this one too. So 10 plus 3 is going to give us 13. 13 plus 3 is going to give us 16. So those are your next two terms in the sequence, 13 and 16. C. C, we start off with 16, 12, 8, 4, and then complete the series, or the next two terms in the series. Let's take a look. This time we're not going up. Um, instead, we are going down. Um, going from 16 to 12, we're going down by 4. 12 to 8, we're going down by 4. 8 to 4, we're going down by 4. So our rule here is that each time around, we are subtracting 4. 4 minus 4 is going to give us 0, but we can still subtract 4 from that to get to our next term. We're just going to end up in the negatives at negative 4. So our two terms now are going to be 0 and negative 4. Let's take a look at D to finish off question number 1. 49, 38, 27, 16, fill in the blanks. Okay, so again, we are going down. We want to see if we're going down by the same amount. To get from 49 to 38, we are decreasing or subtracting by 11. To go from 38 to 27, we're going down by 11. 27 to 16, we're going down by 11. So 16 to our next term, we must be subtracting 11 from that, which is going to give us 5. Then to go from 5, we're subtracting 11 from that now, which will give us a negative 6. So those would be the next two terms here. Let's take a look and move on to number two now. Number two is going to uh, push us a little bit outside of our just adding and subtracting, and it's going to focus more on the multiplying and dividing side of things. So 2a, we're given the sequence of 1, 2, 4, 8, and then again, we have to find the next two. If we take a look, we are increasing here, but we're not increasing by the same amount. So we're not adding here. Um, we're doing something a little bit different. And so to go from one to two, to two to four, four to eight, um, hopefully you're starting to see the pattern, but what I'm actually doing is I'm multiplying by two. 
So when adding or subtracting doesn't work, move to multiplying and dividing. Um, here I'm going to multiply by 2. And uh, if I continue that pattern times 2, 18 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is going to give me 32 as that value. Let's go on to the next series here. 375, 75, 15, 3, and then we have some blanks. Okay, in this particular example, we see that I'm decreasing. Now, we talked in our other video about how when we are decreasing and it's not by just subtracting, um, either what we're doing is we are dividing by a number or we're multiplying by a fraction. We can kind of think about them the same way. Um, so to go from 375 down to 15, we want to figure out what it is that we are going down by or what do we divide by 375 in order to get to 75. And you could plug that into your calculator. One quick way to check that, by the way, is if you tried to see how many times does 75 go into 375. So go the other way that way. And if you were to plug that in, you should find out pretty quickly that that will give you an answer of 5. So there's two ways that we could do this. Either we are going to divide by 5, or the opposite of that is we're going to be multiplying by 1 fifth, 1 over 5, the reciprocal. So divide by 5, divide by 5, divide by 5. 3 divided by 5, though, is going to give us 3 over 5. Now this one gets a little bit trickier. 3 over 5 divided by 5 is also the same as, and we talked about this before too, 3 over 5 times 1 over 5, which would give you 3 over 25. Can't really write that in, in that box, but 3 over 25 would be your sixth term. So that one was a bit trickier, uh, but hopefully you're starting to see the patterns there and work through it. And again, you could use calculators to work this out. Um, I have used fractions here. And in your uh, Google Forms, it will also use fractions to give you your answer. But if you need to convert those into decimals, you can do that as well. C, see we have a, a strange pattern. One, negative one, one, negative one, and then the next two terms. So here, uh, we see that it's flip-flopping back and forth between a positive and a negative. And so what that tells us is that we are either multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Um, so to go from 1 to 1, 1 to negative 1, um, we are going to be multiplying by negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is, ne is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So we just kind of see that pattern here. We can also see, and maybe you could recognize this right away, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. It just continues in that pattern, but this is the reason why. We're multiplying by negative 1 here. D, negative 4, 12, negative 36, 108. Continue those terms. So here we see another one of those examples where we're flipping back and forth between a positive and a negative. And so we want to be able to uh, quickly see that and identify that our number that we're multiplying or dividing by, because now that's our only option, is going to be negative. Um, we're going up from 4 to 12. So what do I multiply uh, to get from a negative 4 to 12? And I'm going to be multiplying by a negative Three. And I can check that pattern, multiply by negative 3, multiply by negative 3. So to go from 108 to our next term, we're going to have to multiply by negative 3. You might need your calculator for this. Um, that's going to give you a negative 324. And then take that, multiply it by negative 3, and that's going to give you a positive 972. For that particular question. So here's one, there's two. Now let's move on to three as we finish up our some of our understanding on sequencing. 3a. 3a we get one, 
8, 27, 64. Okay, so this time around, uh, we have a little bit of a different pattern. Um, maybe something that seems like it's uh, a little bit trickier to understand as we go through. Um, and so let's try to step through this uh, and see if we can figure out what this particular pattern would be. Well, um, if I'm multiplying here, this would be multiplying by 8, but 8 times 8 would give us 64, it would jump to here. So that doesn't quite work. Uh, so is there a adding pattern that I can see? Well, to go from 1 to 8, I'm going to add 7. To go from 8 to 27, I'm going to add 19. To go from 27 to 64, um, here I'm going to have to add 37. So that seems a little bit trickier so far in trying to figure out the terms. Um, so give it a second and think about what could the pattern potentially be here? Is there a pattern that you can start to see? Is there a particular increase that's happening each time or a particular thing that's being multiplied in order to figure out this value? And there is actually, but this one's a much trickier one to solve. And this one actually has to do a little bit with exponents, uh, which we haven't talked about as much here. So three kind of pushes you a little bit and has you thinking a little bit outside the bo box. Um, and that is that uh, the first one here is actually the same as one to the power of three. One to the power of three is one times one times one. This one here is two to the power of three. Two times two times two is eight. 27 is 3 to the power of 3. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 64 is 4 to the power of 3. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So our fifth term must be 5 to the power of 3. And our sixth term is 6 to the power of 3. If you're still stuck on exponents, remember that 5 to the power of 3 is just 5 times itself 3 times. So 5 times 5 times 5 which would be uh, 125. And then six to the power of three is the same as six times six times six, which would be 216. So that one had you thinking a little bit more outside the box um, in solving that particular type of question. Uh, let's take a look at B. B has one, three, six, 10. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out this pattern. Um, and uh, multiplying, it's not really a multiplying pattern. Um, it's uh, an adding pattern, but it's a little bit of a strange one. So to go from one to three, um, I'm going to be adding two. Three to six, I'm gonna be adding three. Six to 10, I'm gonna be adding four. Maybe you're already starting to see the pattern. What do you think I'm gonna be adding to 10 in order to get to my next part here? Well, this is the same pattern actually that we started with at the very beginning of our example in the previous video. The example with the dots making triangles uh, that got consistently larger. So I'm gonna be adding five to my next one and six to my one after that. So I'm gonna have a term of 15 and 21 as my term five and term six. C, C we have one, one half, one quarter, and one eighth. And we have to figure out the rest of the pattern. You may see here that uh, you can think about this as a dividing pattern, right? So each time around, I'm going to be uh, dividing by two. Um, and so when I'm, when I'm dividing by two, it's the same as multiplying by one half. So what's essentially happening is the denominator here constantly gets multiplied by two. Um, that's the same thing as timesing by one half, right? Our top number one times one is always gonna stay the same. Our bottom number is just going to continue to double. So this is going to be 1 16th and one over 32 to give us our finished term for 3C. 3D, 3D is, is a rather odd pattern. Um, one half, 
two thirds, uh, three fourths, and four fifths. It is a rather odd, odd pattern to explain, but maybe it's an easy one to be able to see. Each time around that we're going through, if you look at our numerator, our numerator is increasing by one, and our denominator is also increasing by one each time around. So if I continue through this, my numerator increases by one, so it goes from four to five, and my denominator, the bottom number, also now increases by one to go from five to six. Let's continue that pattern. Five goes to six, and six turns to seven. And so my next two terms, my term five and term six, are five sixths and six sevenths. Hopefully this helps you as you work through some of these exercise questions. Hopefully you were able to get all of these answers already yourself and that this might help as a way for you to get unstuck um, if there's ever one that you are particularly stuck on.